This week we continue the theme of logistics outsourcing, but this time some tips for 3PLs. And these are based on lots of mistakes that I've seen along the way, coming right up. So this week we continue our theme again on logistics outsourcing. Uh, last week, if you saw that video, I had some tips for customers of 3PLs, uh, tips related to the outsourcing process. This week we're going to turn the tables and I've got some tips for 3PLs. So if you run a 3PL or you work in a 3PL, I'm sure you've come across those instances where there's a lot of jubilation and you win a new contract and then three, six, nine months into the contract, you're going, oh no, why did we ever take this on? So these tips will help you avoid that situation. Now, as I mentioned last week with the customer tips, um, I've got eight tips for 3PLs. I'm gonna mention three in this video. I don't, don't wanna make the video too long, uh, but I'll provide a link. We'll stick the link up here. Uh, where you can actually go and download a bit of a checklist with all eight on there. So what are the three uh, that I'm talking about? And I should probably just preface this by saying that I've been involved in helping people through the outsourcing process for over 25 years. Um, and these are some of the most common mistakes that I see. So um, I'm sure some of these are going to resonate with you. Number one, uh, and this is a really hard one for people working in 3PLs, particularly in business development. Not all business is good business. Uh, that's a lesson that took me a few years to learn. And, and what do I mean by that? Look, particularly when maybe the business development team's under pressure, the business is under pressure to win new contracts, there's a danger that, you know, it's almost any contract at any cost. Um, and we can, we can get a little bit sort of desperate without thinking too much about that client that we're going to be taking on. So if you're faced with that situation, you know, I would urge you to always look at a potential new 3PL client and say, are they a good fit for us? You know, are, are they a good fit culturally? You know, the style of your business, the sort of uh, customers that you like working with. Um, you know, do you think you're going to have a good relationship with them? Um, do, you, do you know what you're really good at? And, you know, are they a good fit for you? Or is this, you know, sometimes it happens like, oh, we want to break into a, into a new industry and maybe this is our chance to get a first contract in that industry. Um, just, just be aware of that. You know, not all business is good business. The best business is probably uh, for a 3PL, the business that really fits with you, your industry experience, your capabilities and so on. And, it's, and you know, it's going to be relatively easy for you to take on that new contract. So that's the first one. Very closely aligned with that, make sure that the requirements of this new customer absolutely fit your capabilities. So that could be in terms of, you know, the style of warehousing, the type of products that are being handled, um, you know, if it's transport related, uh, are your assets appropriate for that? I've seen over the years quite a few instances where, you know, 3PLs have bid for work and they've said, look, this is the solution that we've got for you and it's this, you know, fantastic solution, it's going to fit you so well. And you just get this feeling that it's, this solution is being proposed because that's what they have and they need you know, more throughput, they, they need to leverage that capacity, that capability, but it's not really the right solution. So again, it's very closely aligned to you know, not all business is good business. Make sure that your capabilities really do match those of the potential customer. And I'm not going to name names, but you see um, well-known 3PLs in the industry chase similar sorts of customers all the time. Why is that? Because it's so much easier. We're geared up to look after, you know, whatever it might be, an automotive type customer, uh, <clears throat> an FMCG type customer. You know, we know their products. We, we're set up to handle those sort of uh, products and orders and, and delivery to their, their types of customers. It's just easier to do more of what you're really good at. So again, just be a little bit wary. There's always going to be times where you want to break into um, you know, new industries and things like that, but just be aware of the risks if it's something that, that you don't have a lot of expertise in. 
The third one um, I'll mention, and this, this happens quite a lot. So no, normally here at Logistics Bureau, we look after you know, aiding people through this logistics outsourcing process. We're normally working with the client uh, and helping them understand 3PL's capabilities and, and evaluating responses and so on. So we, we always try to make sure our clients have a very robust process so that you know, it's very objective and fair and everything is assessed uh, you know, uh, fairly so that everybody gets a good chance and there's no biases involved, you know, when they actually get down to the shortlist and, and trying to pick people. One of the things, though, that can trip that up um, is that some 3PLs will want to suggest alternative solutions. So what I mean by that is the client is asking for, you know, we want a warehouse here, uh, we want this type of delivery service, whatever it might be, and perhaps it's a little bit back to my previous point where the 3PL doesn't have a warehouse here, but they have one there, um, and they're going to offer that as a solution, and it's not quite what the client wants. The point that I'm getting to here is always, always put in a conforming bid. Um, now, it can feel a little bit like you know, scoring by the numbers, and, and it is to a degree to get from a long list to a short list, um, but you know, the client is looking for, we've asked for this, have you offered this? And they're going to be going tick, 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 do you have? And, and where it doesn't match, it throws them into a bit of a quandary. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't offer alternative solutions. The point here is offer a conforming bid first. Here's what you asked for. This is what we can provide. And it matches. Perfect. Then, it's not, you know, it's quite common. If you think you've got a better idea, then you put in your alternative bid. So look, rather than you know, do your warehousing here or, or like this, we've actually got some great experience and we've got a great track record in doing it this way. So here's an alternative. You know, here's the conforming solution. Here's what, one that we think is better. That's the way to do it. Always have a conforming one. So it, it probably means a little bit of extra work, but if you don't have the conforming one, sometimes it, it can impact your sort of ratings getting from the the long list to the short list because it makes the evaluation more difficult for them. So use the conforming bid to get onto the short list and then you can sort of push your alternative better solution uh, if that's appropriate. So there we go. Three simple tips. Let's just recap. Not all business is good business. Make sure you're a good match culturally and so on. Uh, make sure that the customers, the potential customers requirements really meet your uh, capabilities and experience. And if you're going to submit something alternative, a bit more imaginative, perhaps always have a conforming bid and then the alternative bid. So if you want to download uh, that checklist, there's five more tips like that. Just uh, go to the link up here. Um, so there's eight tips for the customers, eight tips for the 3PLs. You'll get that checklist that shows both of them. Um, and also, if you have considerable experience in uh, 3PL outsourcing yourself, feel free to add some comments down below. What are, what are some of the things that you see clients doing that cause problems or that you've seen 3PLs do that maybe kind of don't help the process? Um, and, and really, I, I see this whole process as a little bit like a courtship and a marriage. Um, and in fact, I think there's a video on the channel where I, I, I talk about that analogy in a lot of detail. But you, you should be going into this, you know, with a lot of openness, honesty, uh, a lot of visibility about, you know, what you're offering, what, what sort of service you're looking for. And you should be aiming for a pretty long term contract. To, to my mind, you know, if, if you're one of these businesses that so I'm talking about the customer's perspective for a minute, that goes to the market every three years just as a matter of course, you know, and we expect to change our 3PL all the time. That's so disruptive. Um, and I, I would have to say, why? Um, you know, you, you can kind of benchmark the performance and you can benchmark the costs and service performance and see how things are going. You don't have to go through that rigmarole of going to the market all the time. Um, and I've, I've seen, you know, some of our clients have the same 3PLs for decades, to be honest. And, and if the relationship's good and the service is good, why would you change? So do have that mindset, you know, whether, whether you're the customer of the 3PL or the 3PL, look at it long term, think of it that way, build that relationship, build that, that trust, 
uh, you know, that strong bond. Um, and there's no reason why it shouldn't last for a very, very long time. So here's that download again. Jump on there. Um, and if you've got any tips that you want to share, I'd love to see them down below. Oh, and finally, if you are not subscribed to this channel, uh, do hit the subscribe button, do hit the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video coming out. I like to see with those subscriptions which videos are more popular. Um, so it gives us some, some good feedback, it encourages us, encourages us to keep creating those videos. So if you enjoy them, do hit subscribe and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.